So we've completed the, the repairs to the cluster. We have it connected to our test harness and we'll turn the power on. What we're looking for is all segments on the cluster to turn on for the first two seconds during the lamp test. And then gradually they turn themselves off and display the static display you see here. Some of the numbers, like this one, don't display all seven segments, they only display six segments, and that's because this digit only needs to display a one or a two. This is also the case here and here. Next, we'll test the function of the gauges. To do this, I'm using a signal generator. It is set to a 400 hertz sine wave at approximately one volt peak amplitude. I'll turn that on now. I'm sorry, the signal generator is connected to pins C15 and C5, and this, uh, this feeds a tachometer signal to the cluster. I'll turn the signal generator on now and the tachometer is displaying exactly what it should. 66 to 6700 RPM at 400 Hertz. We'll turn the signal generator off and reset. Next we've connected the signal generator to pins D11 and C15. This feeds an input to the speedometer function of the cluster. The signal generator is set to 65 hertz sine wave, again 1 volt peak amplitude, and we'll turn that on now. We should see approximately 60 miles per hour, and we should also see the odometer motor turning. We also see the tripometer increasing. Hi, my name is Brian Thompson. I'm an electrical engineer and I've been repairing Corvette instrument panels for over 12 years. If you'd like to do the repairs yourself, you can find parts as well as written instructions with high-res photos at my website, batty.com. B-A-T-E-E dot -E com. If you don't feel like you can do the repairs yourself, we offer a repair service. If you have questions, email sales at B-A-T-E-E dot -E com. If you like the video, click thumbs up. It makes it easier for other people to find this video. You'll find links to all this information in the description below.